guys, Long Haul Larry here, and we got Big Blue in the shop. Uh, we're going to do a couple things today, a couple little maintenance things that need to be done. Uh, one of them is to replace the air dryer filter. Uh, boss man gave me a new filter. I did. He did. Gave, he gave me an air filter too. I've replaced that already. Um, I, that was the simplest couple little thumb screws and it comes apart. You just put a new filter in. I did that. This one here actually is up underneath the truck here. Let's see if I can show it to you guys. Yeah, go ahead in here probably. You can see it. It's right up underneath there. So. So basically what I'm going to end up doing is having to um, drain the air in the truck. And then I'll go up underneath there and just simple unscrew it. Put the new filter on there. Put a little grease on the, on the O-ring on the filter. Tighten her back down. There you go. All fixed. Uh, the other thing is <clears throat> the APU. Uh, APU has been working great. Uh, no problems with the APU. That seems to be all fixed and running really good. The only problem is is that when the condenser does fire up and out the APU will be running and there's a temperature control inside the truck. And when you set a temperature, it'll cool and stuff and turn on and off and the condenser in the um, inside the, the compressor inside there. I can't even think right at the moment. <laughs> inside the APU for the AC system it will engage and there's a belt that drives that and if you guys watch JBG Travels he just had this problem he um, his belt went out and so he had to take it in it was like 125 bucks the problem with these APUs is they do not have a tensioner on that belt so it's kinda like an old style old school alternator belt adjuster you just slide the alternator to the belts tight and then that's where it is well, the problem is, and that worked fine in the older stuff. Now all the vehicles have serpentine belts. But in this system, that can, uh, compressor in there. Is that a compressor? No, it's a condenser. I can't even think right now in my head. I'm just like, whoa, I can't think. Um, when it does engage, when it tells it to engage, it has a clutch on there. And that clutch, clutch disengages. It's electronic. And that puts a lot of torque on that belt. And when that does that, it stretches the belt just a little bit. I've been noticing this last week that once in a while when it fires up and that engages, the belt squeals just a little bit. So that means that the belt's starting to get a little bit loose. So we're going to have to take the bottom pan off of the APU, crawl up underneath there, loosen everything up, retension it. Get some nice tension on that belt, and that should save that belt and keep that from happening so it doesn't get loose and then end up tearing that belt up. I do have a spare belt that I carry in the truck with me. It's a very common problem with these APUs. So I do have a spare belt in case it happens on the road. I could fix it, but I figure while we're in here, let's tighten this up and see if we can get these belts as, less, as long as possible. Uh, then hopefully the other thing that I'm going to be able to do is I'm also going to get my inverter wired in. And I was going to do some real sophisticated stuff. I was going to run some wiring up underneath there, put some posts up through the frame of the, the body of the truck. So they're inside there and have some little screw things on there and everything. I didn't get those ordered. And I've just been thinking about it. And it's like, you know what? I'm just going to use a couple cables, run it down out of the cab, run it down into the battery box, hook it up. Just do it simple. Why, why overcomplicate things, you know? My time is kind of limited what I can do, so let's just get this done and get rolling. All right, guys. Uh, the first step that we're going to have to do is drain the air tanks and <clears throat> drain the air off the system of the truck. It's right here. The cable actually runs to the outside, but I just was down here, so this is down here. But basically, if you pull this cable from the outside, it's going to drain the air tanks. But I'm just going to do it down here. I'll just do it manually. It's going to be kind of loud, so I'll probably cut this part out. See, and that's one tank. There's another tank that's up here. So we're going to do both tanks. One. Um, I thought I'd show you guys around this a little bit down here. This is, if you hear me like me, John, whatever, we talk about DEF. When we fuel and stuff, we have to put DEF into the tank. Um, that tank is actually located over on this side. It's up underneath those, on top of those air tanks. You're going to see it. But 
basically this is a DEF system right here. This is the whole muffler system and everything else. This is where stuff is sprayed in there. And what that is supposed to do is it's supposed to spray in there and it's supposed to burn up all the particles and stuff in the exhaust to make the exhaust run cleaner. I don't know. I'm not a great believer in this DEF stuff, but it's what it is nowadays, so I do it. But you can see how complicated all this stuff is. Man, this would cost a fortune to replace. But basically, the exhaust just runs out, and it just ends right down there. Instead of going up the truck and out. Um, while we're down here, basically, I'll probably, just, you know, I'm just going to take a peek and look at different things, make sure everything is good. Um, one of the things is I will check these U-joints to see if they're good. And basically what you want to do is, you actually have to do this correctly, the actual correct way. You want to lift the tire up and you want to put a jack up underneath one of the axles, lift one of the tires up so that you can spin this drive shaft completely around so you can check each position. But I, I don't really have a ton of time today so I'm not going to go real thorough here. But I'm just going to take it, put my hand on here, and I'm just going to push on it. And I'm just going to wiggle it around and see if that U-joint up in there has any kind of slop in it. If it starts getting slop in it, then it's time to replace the U-joint. And those are real easy to replace, guys. Don't don't be scared to replace a U-joint in a truck. It's real easy. There's just two caps that go on here. You take these out of here. And then you can actually get a puller. That'll pull it out. To tell you the truth, all you got to do is take a hammer and just pound on the, on the U-joint. And it'll push the cap out of one side. And then just do it the other way. It's really easy. And then it'll just wiggle out of there. And you just put the new one in and kind of grease them up. Start putting them in there. Start threading the bolts. you got to make sure. Put lock that on these on these bolts and this, everything. But then um, you just start tightening it together in an even pattern. And it pushes it right in. And you put it back up. And these two little caps go on here with these nut, with these bolts. And there's one on the top too. They're really easy to replace. <coughs> Now this is a drive shaft carrier right here and this is because the drive shaft is so long it needs something to support it in the center and this has like a bearing inside here and it's mounted on a piece of rubber and these can get, can go bad so this is another thing that you want to check you just basically want to lift on it push it around see if it wiggles around all the u-joints on this thing are nice and tight so we're good to go there so let's just replace the the air filter. So it's real simple. I don't know if this filter wrench is gonna fit. Nope. Oh man. Nope. I'm gonna have to get a different filter wrench. I'll be back. Suckers on there. This is the biggest one that I carry. Um, these filter fit the oil filters for like the Detroits and the Max and all that stuff. You know, it's got a big, so you can put a big breaker bar on there and everything. And um, it's just not big enough. So I'm going to have to pick up a bigger one. And I want one like this. I don't want one with a handle off of it because you can't get a lot of prying on it. This one here, you can put a breaker bar into it and really get on it. And that thing's going to be on there tight. So that's going to have to wait, which is not the biggest deal. Um, the, air, the air system is working fine. It's just a, it's a cartridge that you need that you should change once a year. That's what they recommend. So I'll just, um, I'll just have to get a bigger 
bigger filter wrench do that in the future. So I'm going to move on and take this bottom plate off. This will be loud. That is up underneath here and it's it's right in between the leaf spring and the truck and that holds that. Can't get to it with a, with a ratchet. So I just use a vice grips and just clamp on it and give it a couple twists. The nice thing about it is that the cover has little slots in it that don't actually go through holes. So you don't have to take the bolts all the way up. on the side they just have this little notch and then the ones in the back so you kind of put it up and you put the bolts in here and then you can swing the cover up to where the other ones are and you tighten those and then you just put the two in the front pretty easy there we go it's a half inch and these are wrenches that I just pulled out of my toolbox that I carry in my truck so I'm kind of showing you guys that you can you can do this and not have a shop, you know, not have a, you can do this on the road if you need to. somebody like maybe John. <laughs> it's a little big. Now there is a bolt up here, but to tell you the truth, I really don't think I'm going to need to because it's not terribly loose. Now we're going to have to loosen that one up up there too. Well, we got ourselves, I think it's an 11 sixteenths. Yep. loose now see how it slides back and forth that's the way that's the only thing that tensions this belt <coughs> that drives this so what we can do now is just put a little pry bar in there put tension in there tight whole tension on there as you tighten this bolt down. Gotta wait for that click. There we go. Nice tension on there. And then we just tighten our bolt back up up, up on top. tricky to get in here because the belt's in the way. Socket would have been better.
here we go. I'm going to show you guys a neat trick. I'm going to show you guys a neat little trick. Um, say you're on the road or something like that, you don't have an air impact or something like that, that you can really whack on a bolt, you're trying to get it loose and you can't get it loose. Neat trick is this to take a neck size up wrench. This is an 11 16 this is a three quarter. And all you do is you just hook it on just like this. You can see I'm holding a wrench. And I'm tightening this so you do it on the opposite side. But you put it on there and then you can push on this wrench and it gives it added leverage to loosen that bolt. Okay? A little cool little tip for you. Just double the wrench up. There we go. There we go. Bite belt is nice and snug. Another thing is I'm, I'm going to check is I'm actually going to check the clutch. This is the clutch right here for the AC unit. And basically what I'm looking for is how much wobble it has. And to tell you the truth, it's actually getting a little bit worn. Yeah, this is going to have to be... I'm going to have to keep an eye on this. If I hear a lot of noise in there and stuff, I'm going to have to replace this whole clutch assembly here. Which is not a problem, guys. This is this is really easy to do. It's real simple. You can buy this whole pulley assembly. It's all prepackaged up, and they're not that expensive. Well, for cars, they're not. Um, this, because it says Thermal King on it, they might charge, charge you extra, but... Basically what you do is, is you take the belt off and then there's a little bolt in the center. And you just pop that bolt off of there and this whole clutch assembly comes off, the whole pulley comes off. Comes in a new kit, you just put it on there. And then it, you want to, it has to be so many thousandths of a gap in here. And this one's got a little bit of a wobble in it. It's going to be fine, but I'm going to keep an eye on this. Because this is getting a little bit worn. So this will be something that's going to go off probably in a year, you know, who knows how long it'll take. We'll see if it makes it to summer. Since I got this apart, I have never been had the opportunity to put a new bolt in my fuel pump. Yeah, I don't know if you guys remember, I lost one of the bolts in there, so it only has one bolt, so it's only four bolts. I'm just going to put a Phillips head quarter 20 bolt through here. Put a washer, a lock nut, and a nut on there. Should be good to go. Not a big metric guy. So what I usually do, because this year air wrench, they're real good, they're fast, they do things a lot faster than sitting here with a ratchet, but um, they don't torque down, they don't tighten down, they kind of, and then they just stop and they slip actually. So these bolts will get a lot of vibration, so I just give them a little bit of a, a tweak, make sure they're tight in there so they don't come loose. That's actually what happened there when um, Green Bay Thermal King 
actually worked on it. They didn't tighten these up tight enough. And I drove for a day and a bunch of the bolts backed up. So we just give them all a little bit of an extra little oomph. Let's make sure we don't lose any. There we go, guys. Um, APU should be good. I uh, will keep an eye on that pl on that uh, clutch. And. Um, take care of that and uh, we'll be good to go so until next time guys actually you know what <clears throat> I can't believe it I just found a nut for that bolt that goes down there it was laying right here oh uh, I'm not taking it back apart <laughs> I'll just keep it next time I'll change it oh boy I, I bet you this is it though we'll try it on this bolt Yep, that's it. Oh well. Um, I am not going to actually get time enough to do any more repairs. I got a uh, back appointment that I need to get to. Didn't realize it was that late. The broker just called me. Oh, oh this is the most important load in the world. You know, that usual stuff. And, um, you know, oh, we're going to send a tracker thing to your phone. That it just annoys me so much. Oh, so much. But, um, I'm going to, um, I'm just not going to be able to get to the inverter. I'm going to have to do that on the road. I got to find time to get to that, though, because it's just, I got to have power in this truck. I have no 110 power, so charging things and everything else is, is a pretty, pretty big hassle. Um, I only got so many 12-volt outlets and stuff, so... I got to get that done, and then the backup camera too, I got to get that done, it's just, problem is you come home and you just don't have the time, you know, you, I got I got other things I got to do around here too, you know, a little upkeep, and I got to help my parents with a few things, and so, don't get all the time that I want in the world, so, I'm going to let you guys go, I hope everyone out there is having themselves a great day, a great night, when you're watching this here video. If you're not, well, we certainly could change that and try that over again tomorrow. So until next time, guys, see ya.